The Lord be with you. It's great to see you on this beautiful day, everybody deciding that they want to talk about how much rain we got last night and how lovely it was. At least I hope and pray that you were among the joyful people like all of the rest of us. And uh, what an amazing God we have. He continues to provide in his time and according to his will. Those of you who are online, thank you for watching. We hope and pray that you will enjoy the service. Uh, today we're really going to be focusing upon what God does for us and how God in some ways isn't fair. He's actually more than fair when we take a look at the grace that God abundantly gives to so many. So that's going to be our focus on our service for today. Notice it in our readings as well as in our hymn. Uh, following the service today, I'm going to lead a Bible study on Romans. We're going to start with that. Uh, Pastor Dan and his family are on vacation this weekend, so his Bible study it will be next week uh, again. So feel free to join us uh, in the lower level for the study as we begin taking a look at Romans. A couple of other things uh, that are happening today. One is if you like German food... Uh, we will be having the German dinner in a couple of weeks, and so there are tickets that will be on sale after the service as well this weekend, as well as next weekend. Uh, two different seatings, there's information. Um, it's great food. Schmeck gut, for those of you who know what German means, also means taste good, uh, for those of you who don't. Uh, so that's something uh, for us today to uh, enjoy watching. This coming Wednesday, we have... Uh, the Lutheran Church, ex or, excuse me, we have uh, the Lutheran Foundation um, that will be here. Kurt Feuer uh, is our representative in our area. So at from 11 to 12, he is going to share how you can be a blessing to others, looking at what God has given to you, especially uh, when you die. I mean, that's kind of the easiest way to say it. So there's information. A lot of times we don't think about we have enough money or anything left over to give to help other people uh, or other ministries or family members or whatever. So um, Kurt's going to talk about that. It's an overview type thing. And then if people want to meet with him one-on-one, -on -one, he'll be happy to do that. We're going to have a lunch then afterwards at noon. So feel free to come. We're going to have that uh, in the lounge then on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And then uh, today we're going to also recognize Lutheran Hour Ministries. So you hopefully received in your bulletin today an insert um, that looks like this. It says discover lhm.org, Lutheran Hour Ministries for short. A lot of different things that are available through Lutheran Hour Ministries. And if you are not familiar, they have done a lot of things digitally. So Lutheran Hour Ministries speaker on Sunday mornings. Uh, but you can listen to them anytime online. Um, they have podcasts. They have a variety of apps and so forth. Uh, daily devotions for you to be able to listen to and the like. And so uh, we're going to have a door offering today. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can also send um, offerings to them as well. It's something that we are really blessed to have as an auxiliary organization. And so Jennifer is going to show you one of the slides first that I forgot to encourage her to watch. So there you go. It's the same thing that's on your, on your uh, insert. And now we're going to watch a video. And then after that, we'll stand and greet one another with peace of Christ. For over 100 years, Lutheran Hour Ministries has been committed to sharing the gospel with all who will hear it. Today, LHM energizes, equips, and engages Christians to share the gospel throughout North America and around the world. You are a vital part of our mission. When you join our effort to spread the good news, you have access to free digital resources and media that encourage and equip you in your outreach. It's easy to get started. Follow and engage with us on social media, explore our free digital resources and media, and donate to support our ministry efforts around the world. Together in this mission, we can grow his kingdom. Learn more at lhm.org slash discover lhm.
Let's stand and greet one another. If you're able, please stand. We make our beginning hearing the words that were spoken when we were baptized, and God promised to be with us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. John wrote in his first letter, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding presence and care that confidently we may live according to your word, learning of you at all times and ever growing in your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 1. 
I want you to know, dear brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which shall I choose? I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the Alleluia in verse. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is also the basis of my meditation this morning. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last, up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, 
and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Will the children please come forward for the children's mystery box? And here she comes. What is in Emma's box, do you think? Um, um I don't know. Um, what? It makes a lot of noise. Oh, when I shake it like this, it will? All right. But if I were to use this, I don't think it's going to make any noise, is it? Hey, what do you think this stuff is? Tape. Tape it? What kind of tape? Washing? Wash E. What does that mean? Does that mean, like, you, do you put the tape on something to hold it together? What do you use this stuff for? Decorating. Decorating? Oh, okay. So, it's not like putting, holding anything really together type stuff. You could. It does feel like it's pretty sticky. Okay. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> How does it tie to God? I mean, I love it when you come up and give me some ideas. Because we have, to, we have to seal our relationship with God. We have to seal our relationship. How do we seal our relationship with God? By, by, the, by, by going to church. By and going praying. to church? By praying? And by, and by talking to God. Okay. Does God do anything to seal our relationship with him first? Yes. And how does God forgive us first so that we can have that relationship sealed with him? Well, he started with that. What else did he do? He rose. <laughs> Very good. Yes, he rose from the dead. And? And, 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 and not to mention before, 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 before Jesus, he, he put the rainbow up in the sky. Oh, yeah, God put the rainbow up in the sky to give us the promise that he would... Love us and save us. What happened to you a long time ago, perhaps, so that God sealed his love and his relationship with you? Well, that's true. Baptism, 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 baptism. I wanted to bring you to baptism, okay? That's my point. When you were baptized, God sealed his promise to you, right? He said, I love you, I forgive you, and I promise that if you believe in me when you die, you're going to live with me forever in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And because he did all of these things, we want to do all the things that you guys are talking about, right? So that we're able to grow in our relationship with him. And that relationship continues to be sealed stronger all the time. And in some ways, it's very decorative too. So let's pray. Dear Jesus... Thank you for sealing my relationship with you when you baptized me. Now help me to love you and share your love with others and grow in my faith. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so Ella, I'm going to give you that Emma. I'm going to give you that back. Thank you. And which one of you are going to be here next week? Um, I definitely am. Well, I'll use Simeon. Simeon's not going to be here. Okay. Well, we don't need to know about that right now. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> you want to bring one for your sister? Simeon, are you going to grab one of these? Okay. Here, you can even bring back one of those back for your sister. Why don't you hang that back to Simeon on your way over there, okay? With the, with the, the tape thing, yeah. it goes from like decorative tape to like strong T-Rex tape. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of kinds of tape. All right, let's sing our next song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The text for meditation this morning are the words that were read for you earlier in our gospel reading. Sam worked faithfully at his job for many years. He wouldn't have cheated the company if his life had depended on it. He loved his work, and he planned to stay with the company until he retired. However, a few years before he was able to retire, his company went bankrupt, and he lost all of the benefits that he would have received. He didn't get what he deserved. Pedro was a boy who grew up in the inner city. He had a troubled childhood. He robbed several stores. He even killed a man. When he was caught, eventually he was released because of insufficient evidence. Pedro did not get what he deserved. But who does? Does anyone get what they deserve? A person can work hard in their life like Sam did and not get what he deserved. Pedro could do all of the evil things he did and not get what he deserved. And you and I as sinful human beings do not get what we deserve. Do you remember what Jesus told the thief on the cross? The one who asked Jesus to remember him in his kingdom when they were being crucified? That thief must have done something pretty horrific to have been sentenced to be crucified. He did get the punishment he deserved, but he received a better blessing than anything he deserved. He received the gift of eternal life from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who showered his grace and mercy upon this man in that very hour of his life. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus tells us a parable. It's a story. It's that people of their day could relate to, understanding what it's like to wait for a job and then go out and work in a vineyard. He told the story to help them understand that God is not fair, at least according to our understanding. When you and I try to understand what God is going to do in order to give the gift of eternal life to different people. Jesus uses this illustration of the hiring process. And notice Jesus begins by hiring men who agree to go and work. 12-hour day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., those workers make sure that they will receive a denarius. That was the coin that a person would receive for working a full 12-hour day. It was the pay that would show they are being treated fairly. It was the going rate. So at various times, the landowner of the vineyard decides he's going to go to this place where he hired these other guys in the first place and he sees people standing idly around and he asks them if they would like to go and work and they agree that they will go and work in the vineyard and receive the payment he gives them. They don't ask what he'll pay them. They simply go and work. They receive a gift. They don't expect anything special, but they rely totally upon the gracious act of this owner. Now, the people who were hired first may refer to the people who expect God to let them into heaven. 
because they believe they deserve it. They have been Christians their entire lives. They dedicated their lives to work in the church. The others who were hired later may refer to the people today who are simply thankful they have received the gift of faith. Now, the people who were hired first may also represent people who are baptized as children and rejoice that they have received the gift of faith and the promise of an eternal life. And in so doing, they believe God's promise that he will indeed give them this gift of eternal life. He promises in baptism. And they go to work. And they did. Now, the people who were hired later on represent people who receive God's grace at various times in their lives. They know that they don't deserve to go to heaven. Just as the workers know they don't deserve a denarius because they weren't going to put in a full day of work. When I was serving as a pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Mora, Minnesota, Esther and her daughter Elaine and Elaine's family were very active in our congregation. When Esther became ill and entered into hospice, she was having hospice come to her home. And so I would go to her home on the farm, and I would visit with her and give her communion and have a service with her. And that's when I discovered that Esther was married. She had a husband by the name of Palmer. Palmer chose to sit in that living room in his rocking chair and listen. We conversed a little bit back and forth but my primary focus was upon Esther and her spiritual condition and preparation for that time when she would be with the Lord. Once Esther died and I did her funeral, Palmer asked me whether or not he could become a member of our church. And so he went through our instruction, became a member, and I eventually did his funeral service as well. What I did not mention yet is that when I met Palmer during that time period, I also learned that when Esther and Elaine were younger and Elaine was a child, Palmer made life rather difficult for them to go to church. And so I continued to reach out to him, as I said, being kind while I was ministering to Esther. But I must tell you, sinfully speaking, I don't believe it was fair for Palmer, who had made life so difficult for his wife and daughter when they were younger, to worship, grow in their faith, that now, after his wife had died, he chose to become a Christian and receive God's grace and mercy. But that's because I, as a sinful human being, look at situations sometimes like this and say, it's not fair. But I also remember it's an act of God's grace that people are saved. Now, Jesus told this parable to help us understand how sin has corrupted our lives and our minds. Our sinful nature believes we should get better benefits and rewards in this life than those other people, especially those people who only become Christians later on in their lives. I mean, after all, we've dedicated our lives to serve the Lord. Shouldn't we receive more and better benefits? 
But that's not how God's grace works. That's why we often can take a look at this situation at first glance that these owners' payments weren't fair. Imagine, if you will, at the end of the day, when the foreman, imagine that foreman is actually Jesus Christ himself, begins to pay the workers. But he starts with the last one hired first. And he gives him a denarius. The payment for working a full 12-hour day. And as those other workers who were hired first are watching what's taking place, they're going, this doesn't make sense. But you can imagine the anticipation that they have. Well, if he's giving them that much money, imagine how much more we're going to get because we worked so much harder than they did. And of course, soon it was their turn to receive their pay. And the owner only gave them a denarius, the coin for a full day's work. It's not surprising that those who were hired first, who had worked in the heat of the sun, were shocked when they received only a denarius. We're not surprised that they started to grumble and complain. But you know what the scriptures tell us? In verse 12, they said to the owner, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Did you catch that? You have made them equal to us. I can imagine them saying that. I can imagine them saying, it's not fair. Can you imagine yourself saying something like this if it was you? They didn't do the same amount of work. My friends, it isn't fair. But God's grace isn't fair. Notice what Jesus said to them in verse 13, to one of them. Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for denarius? Jesus simply is following through with his promise and on their agreement. So he says, take what belongs to you and go. And he asks the question, Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? The owner gave them the amount they had agreed for a full day's work. And he chose to be generous to others. And when we look at this in a spiritual way, how can you and I begrudge God's generosity in giving faith, forgiveness of sins, and the promise of an eternal life to people later in life? And some of those people who have done horrific things. It shouldn't be a problem. Because you and I are the ones, just like them, who have benefited totally and completely because of the one, Jesus Christ, who hung on that cross, who suffered and died to pay for the sins of all people, those who were hired first and those who were hired last. He is the one who saves he is the one who gives grace. He is the one who sends us out to share this good message. In closing, I'd like you to join with me in reading the words of stanza one of our sermon hymn. Hark the voice of Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? 
Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he offers thee. Who will answer gladly saying, here am I, send me, send me. Our Savior has saved us, and he calls us to be the ones who go to share his word. As we find recorded and as we sang in stanza two, especially the last line, please read that with me. Some take up his task in mourning, to their Lord responding soon. Some are called in heart of midday, others late in afternoon. Even as the sun is setting, some are sent into the fields, there to gather in the bounty that God's word so richly yields. We are blessed that God has given us his word. We are blessed that God has given us the sacraments. We are blessed that our God is faithful. And God calls people in his time and according to his will. For our God is more than gracious. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which passes our understanding, guard us in the Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated at this time. I encourage you to fill out the registration cards, those ivory colored cards for those of you who are here as disciples of Jesus. And those of you who would like to know more about our congregation, please let us know uh, online especially as well. We now give to God a portion of what God has given to us in response to the blessings he showers upon us. As we take time to pray, I encourage you to take out your bulletin and especially look at the last page as we give you an opportunity to know a variety of needs that people have and we include those for you to take home as well as we pray for them in this service. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, grant that we would rejoice in the light of Christ and his salvation and that sinners would find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. 
Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, embolden our congregation and all sister churches throughout the world to confess the truth steadfastly and to witness boldly to our only Savior, Jesus Christ, as we rejoice in the Lutheran Hour Ministries and the privilege we have to work alongside them to get the message of Jesus and what he has done for all humanity to people throughout the the globe. Continue to guide and bless us and others as we share. And be with our missionaries, Fong and his family, Greg and Sinwin, Pastor Stephen and Vicar Alex, and our preschool, our mops, and so many others as we have opportunity to share the love of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we give you humble thanks for instituting the estate of holy marriage and for the blessing of family. Grant that these gifts would be cherished and honored in our society and especially within the household of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Lord, bless this nation and all people in their rightful callings. We ask that you would be with our leaders. Guide and bless them in all that they say and do. We also pray for protection for those who serve in our armed forces and their families. Peter, Megan, Aaron, Dan, Brody, Scott, Andrew, Jim, Dalton, Dylan, Brandon, Teddy. And watch over and bless them. And all that, all the authorities would exercise their callings with humility and wisdom on behalf of the defenseless. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of health. Hear our prayers on behalf of the sick, the aged, the infirm, the mourning or the dying, especially Debbie, Dick, Eileen, Herb, Victor, Karen, Dana, Margaret, Peggy, Verna, Mary, Jim and Meredith, Philip, children of Rick and Lynn, Martin, Jim, Carol, Jack, Tammy, David, Michelle, Jill, Patty, Bill, Lyle, Dan, Pastor Norb, Wayne, Gloria, Lana, Rick and Lynn, Joanne, Faye, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them healing in accord with your will and grace to sustain them in their need. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, grant that. In Christ, we may seek you while you may be found, and a call upon you while you are near, forsaking all wicked ways and unrighteous thoughts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we join together in praying the prayer our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join together in sharing and speaking the growing in the word. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Psalm 26, verse 8. And receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. 